So, I'm going to do a beautiful natural eye on Yvette today. And because her body's quite brown at the moment, but she said she's got a little bit of a fake tan on, I'm not going to make her quite as brown as her body. I'm choosing the colour that's her normal skin tone. Slightly greener. Yeah, so that's just that foundation. And the reason I love to use a brush, it makes the skin look airbrushed. And what I'm making sure is that I can still see skin. I always want to see skin. And all I did beforehand is we just did a micellar wipe all over the face. And then I got a Tatcha face mask, which I love, they're Japanese. So the great tip of the day with foundations, buy one that has a little bit more coverage than what you want, but you use less product. And you just keep polishing away. Close your eyes for me. So you cannot see the foundation. And make sure you get this little part of the neck too. It can be pale here because it's blocked from the sun. And I always like to clean up the eyebrows, the lips. So I always take the foundation that I've used all over and eyes up for me. And I'm just going to put a light wash under the eye. And the reason I tend to use the foundation instead of just concealer is if you take foundation all the way up, you can just guarantee that your skin tones will be really even. One thing that's a little bit dangerous to do is to use concealers that are a lot lighter than the skin. And if you do that, if you use a concealer that's really, really light, what can happen? It can make the under eye look grey. And I'm just going to do a really soft wash of it on the eyelid. The reason I do this is foundation is thinner and finer than concealer. Eyelids don't hold product very well because the skin is so thin. I also like to put some lip balm on. Another great trick, sometimes I'll take the colour that I know I want to use in a gloss and I just stick it on the lips now because if you're in a hurry, choosing the right lip colour when you haven't seen an outfit can be really challenging. And I'm not even going to worry about putting it on perfectly, it's just to soften the lip up. And that way, by the end, I can have a look and go, mm, that lip's too pink, it's too nude. It just sort of helps me decide at the end. Alright, so step one, what I'm going to do is take a very, very light translucent powder. Wherever you put the eyeshadow on an eyelid, you don't want the lids to be sticky like sticky tape. So what a great trick is you get some translucent powder and the areas that you know you've got to blend really well, which is always through the socket line, this part here, I use a little bit on the outer corner and this way for me and look down. But I'm going to use cream on the eyelids, that's the reason I'm not putting this all over the eyelid. So this is your first time doing a natural eye at home, I'm going to take you through a quick little bit of theory. I'm going to take a colour that's a natural colour, it's got a little bit of brown, I'm going to do a bronzy eye today, I don't want to use too much shimmer, so I'm just going to take a brown pencil that doesn't have shimmer in it and use that as my guide. Traditionally we have been taught to darken the socket line, but if you do that you're going to push her eyes in more and make this heavier. The idea, what I want to do is give her what I call a ponytail lift. And when women do ponytails, they either pull their ponytail back this way or up that way. What do you prefer if you do a ponytail? You want up girl? Get your hands and just pull. Probably there. Okay, so what she's doing, which I love, right answer, <laughs> she's pulling her eyes this way, not so much this way. So what I'm doing here is what I call either my C or a V. You have to know, are you a C or are you a V? Now you're a C. <laughs> so if you want your eyes to go this way, what I like to do is extend the eye and come out and like a C and go back into that socket. So just remember, see, if you like your eyes pulled up, it'll be more like a V, which would be up and V into the socket line, but you're gonna be a C. But the trick to eyes, to make them look amazing, is always extending them. If you stop your eye makeup right where your eyes stop, you actually make your eyes look smaller. And what you can see here, if you have a puffy eyelid, or part of the eye that you don't like, and most women and men say to me, it's this part. If it's really puffy, cut it in half. And what I mean by that, instead of having a whole area with shimmer, 
you actually take a dark like a contour color and you cut through the bone and you make the puffiness the area that's full a lot smaller so I'll let that sit there for a minute get some pencil and then I'm gonna blend so once you've done your letter C we're gonna make our C into an E okay so we've got our socket line there and now we're going to intensify along the lash line just on the outer third all I want you to do when you look straight into the mirror at home know where the highest part of your eyelid is and a vet's height is right there so what I want to do from that point outwards I want to lift her eye so basically what that means is you're creating a thicker triangle here and you want that pencil to completely disappear just before the peak of her eye and that will give us lift. It's really important every step you blend before the next step. So this is another great pencil, it's called Teddy and it's going to go in her inner waterline. Eyes up for me. The first trick I'm going to show you, which I love, it's a weird thing to do, so bear with me. What I've actually done, so I put the pencil in, you can do it black, gray, just don't use a shimmer colour. You comb in the inner part of the eye and then any pencil that accidentally gets on the flat part of the eye you just remove. What you'll see when you look straight ahead, she, her eye now looks longer from there to there. And this is a trick that I find we miss a lot. We always end up making the eyes look bigger this way. But for me, it's about opening the eye but creating as much length this way. Now I'm going to take that same pencil, look down for me, and I'm just going to intensify that top lash line. And like I said before, you want that colour to disappear, look straight in front, before you get to the point, the highest point of your lid. Okay. And if you remember this for your eyes only, every makeup you do, you'll follow the same shape, but you'll just use a different colour, different intensity. So I'm just taking that Teddy pencil and I'm just darkening my letter E. Eyes up for me. Yes, pencils can smudge, so I will be setting a little bit of eyeshadow later. Later, Look straight ahead. I must admit, eyeshadows are quite hard to use on eyes like ours. Look down, where you've got that little bit of skin movement happening. So when you put eyeshadows on a lid that's a little bit mobile, you know, we're not teenagers, but um, but teenagers when you start on Instagram, the lids are so tight. But with us. Um, see how the skin can move if you put too much pressure on it so if you're putting a powder on that you get all these holes and marks it's very hard to work with so I recommend creams um, Trini has amazing cream products um, which I use all the time Ellis Fast is a favorite MAC is a favorite so you can see just that simple trick has intensified her eyes so we've done a letter E with a soft color and now we're doing the letter E again, but I want this part of the eye to be the darker. So I'm going to darken that down in a triangle shape, look straight ahead for me. And when you go with a darker pencil, this it's called reverse blending. So when you go with a darker pencil, all you need to remember, don't take it as wide as the first pencil. Because what I'm doing, I'm going light, dark, darkest. And if you keep the set, the darker colour within those boundaries of what you've already done, your blending is there for you. My main thing when I'm doing eyes, and I want eyes to be awake, I want to keep as much lightness in this part of the eye as possible. And the great thing about creams, you don't get fallout. So I want to show you a brush that really helps you with hooded eyelids. I purposely left some foundation on the brush for this technique and this is one of the hardest brushes but one of my most important brushes, 6.5. Just put colour just on this part, the tip and watch this. So you look down and now look straight ahead and drop your eye a tiny bit. And what you do is you just move this brush back and forth and it will do all the work for you. So the heavier the lid the more the lid will touch the brush, the more the brush will shade back what needs to be shaded back. So you don't even have to think about it. 6.5, and look at that. It just blends everything so beautifully. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go inside her waterline. I'm going to start light first. This is cork. It's a lip pencil. Is that for me? I'm going to come inside. Now I get asked this all the time. If you go in the waterline, have a blend. Does it make the eyes smaller? 
Yes, it does if that's all that you do. Have a blink, have a blink, look straight ahead for me. But if you go on the inner waterline and in the outer, look straight ahead, in the outer corners in the lash line, you actually don't make the eyes smaller, you make them more intense. See, I always answer that question with you need to do both. And then try and make the shape underneath the eye a little bit straight. Okay. And if you want to go one step further, remember you can stop this eye now, put mascara on and away you go. Or I'm taking a brown matte eyeshadow. The colour is, oh, it's actually this, oh hang on. Sculpting powder, which actually is great. Contour powders are amazing for this. And look down for me, and I'm just gonna just add a bit of depth to that outer corner here. Look straight ahead for me. And that's what's gonna lift that eye. Just darkening that little outer corner with some powder. Okay, I'm gonna leave that middle part of the eyelid there and keep it as a natural skin tone. You can put color there. Shimmer, be very careful if you've got fine lines on the eyes. Which you don't really have at all. It can just make the eyes look more crepey. I call it fish scales. So just look down for me. This is a beautiful powder. This is the NARS translucent powder I've got here. And I'm going to use that as my colour. And look straight ahead. I'm going to curl your lashes. Here we go. Three seconds. One, two, three. Shell, it's quite affordable. I get mine from Priceline here in Australia. Put a link up for you. Now, really important when you're gelling brows up, you want to put most of the product at the roots. If you walk away from this, this brow gel is too wet, the brows will go back to their original position. So please hold them while they dry. Love. This is one actually I'm personally using at the moment. Clinique Lash Power Mascara. It's a um, tube mascara, which are my favourite. So tubes don't actually... Um, they don't bleed under the eyes. So eyes up for me. I'm going to do the under eye first. And you can see with a metal comb, you can get every lash right to the roots. And if you just do that mistake that I just do, I can show you how to fix that up. Just lift that for me. So with mascara, if you get it on the skin, you've got to get it straight away. Or the other way, you've got to wait for it to completely dry. And down towards me and right across. When you're these inner corner lashes, don't bring your brush this way. You want to bring it out and fan. You're allowed to blink if you want to. Out and fan. Look just to me. So, her eyes like to go apart. So here we go. Angle brush number 24 with her foundation. What I'm going to do is just do a line and make sure any bit of eyeshadow that may have accidentally gone under my shape that I want is removed. And as we get a little bit older, we get quite deep right here. So it actually will open the eyes and make them look more brighter and more lifted. All I'm going to do now is foundation. I'm going to leave her brows and just put a simple blush and lip gloss on. I love this trick. So I had foundation on earlier. I've let it soak in. I can see areas where the skin is absorbing it too much. And now when I put my second coat on, all the magic happens. So I'm just taking some concealer eyes up for me. This is the NARS concealer and I'm just going to lighten this inner part of the eye. I don't use concealer here where there's this mark for me, where the skin's really mobile. But a great little place I like to put, look straight to the camera a bit, just in this little part of the eye here. Because we, we sink in here when we get a bit older. I want to do a sneaky trick too. I'm going to lighten her temple. Because we tend to flatten a little bit there. I'm going to lighten a little bit here. And I like to come in here and just in there. I'm just going to now pop on some blush. It's an RMS blush. And just relax there for me. And I'm just going to finish off with a lip gloss. And this way you can see the difference from one side to another. The reason I'm not using a shimmery blush, it's really important. Because she has such beautiful high cheekbones, Anything that sits up here where the light hits, shimmer will make the blush go lighter. Any part of the blush that goes underneath into a shadow 
the blush can go two or three shades darker. Okay, what I'm doing now is a quick finish off. I'm just going to add a bit of bronzer up high. And you'll notice how much more tan that side of the fa face looks. And all I've done is I've only applied bronzer here because that's where your face tans. I am only going to give her a contour right in this spot here. I'm not going to drag it forward. She has great bones. And if I contour like normal, it'll actually age her. And come back this way. And I'll just put in. I don't always use pencils, but I love to use a pencil spice by MAC just in the Cupid's bow here. I don't like it too pointy either. Then with my lips, I, I like to extend under here. But you'll notice I'm not going all the way to the corners because it will drag her lip down. So in the outer corners, I'm just going a little bit above her lip shape. And we'll put a cross on. This is a Pat McGrath book quite it's incredible actually. Where should we taste this one? It's mm. called Finish Fantasy. So I've just finished off the lips. I did add, um, I changed my mind. I put Bella on, it's a NARS colour, and then I use the Graph lip gloss just on top and I've done blush and I'm just going to finish off with a little bit of mattifier I'm going to do reverse highlighting so what that means I'm going to kill it the shine in those areas that are a little bit too full on you can do this all over eyes up for me and then tip of the nose and get in those corners the chin and then come right around here but I'm going to keep all the shine. I'll show you the difference. So that's one side. I've kept all her natural sheen. I haven't had to put shimmer or anything on. I've kept the skin really hydrated. And then you can see the shine there. So it's still got that beautiful youthfulness. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to do the other side. So I'm just finishing off here. We'll go and do some, take her hair out. And we'll take some photos and all the products will be in the link. So I hope you enjoy.